Hi, everybody. Welcome to week three. Um, we are going to now talk about the nervous system and brain structures. Get excited. Okay. So uh, we have a lot of videos again this week. Um, the first one um, is a one that's the division of the nervous system, and I will have a link to that as well. Um, so you can watch that on YouTube. So we'll start with the peripheral nervous system. Um, there, it communicates with the central nervous system to allow for interaction with the environment. And so um, it's located outside of the brain and spinal column, and it consists of two, uh, two systems. So there's the somatic nervous system, um, and all somatosensory information runs through that nervous system. And so somatosensory is relating to or denoting a sensation. So pressure, pain, warmth, um, they can occur anywhere on the body in contrast to one that's localized to a sense organ. So not a nose, not tasting, not hearing, right? So anything else that you might feel in your body. I think we talked about that last week. Um, it connects voluntary skeletal muscles to cells responsive to sensations such as touch, vision, and hearing. And so again, it's gonna help with all of those things. Um, there are two different types of nerves in the peripheral nervous system. There's afferent. So if you think about afferent nerves, they approach the central nervous system um, and they connect eyes, ears, skin, and skeletal muscles to the central nervous system. And they allow sensory information to be transmitted to the central nervous system. So afferent approaches the CNS, right? And then efferent nerve cells. So think efferent exiting the central nervous system. It carries information from the CNS to the skeletal muscles, which allows for movement, right? Afferent approaches, efferent exits, central, central nervous system, right? <clears throat> okay. Then we have the autonomic nervous system, um, which consists of neurons that connect the CNS to internal organs, um, heart, lungs, liver, kidney, that kind of stuff. Um, it regulates the response of the body, which allows for the involuntary control of the heart, endocrine system, exocrine glands, and smooth muscles. And so that's the stuff that we don't have to think about and just keep, but it obviously is very important to life, right? That those things keep going. Um, the autonomic nervous system is subdivided into two complementary systems. Um, so the sympathetic nervous system regulates arousal by mobilizing energy during times of high stress or high energy. So you're about to run a race, you're being chased by Bigfoot, same, right? So that's going to be your sympathetic nervous system going, okay, something big's about to happen. Let's do this. Um, it releases adrenaline in response to fear, danger, and excitement, and it increases your activity and your metabolic rate. <clears throat> it's involved in the fight, flight, or freeze um, response to um, danger or things. So we have to remember too that we always think fight or flight, but freeze is another one because um, sometimes you can't uh, fight or flee and you just got to be there and be really quiet, right? So um, during those times though, if you think about the sympathetic nervous system, it's the gas pedal of the brain. It's going to get things going. We're going to fight. We're going to get out of this. We're going to survive. Um, so it shunts blood away from organs that aren't necessary to the immediate survival um, and an increase of blood flow to muscles, heart, and other, um, other uh, vital organs for physical activity. Um, the pulse rate and the blood open uh, increase, blood pressure, sorry, pulse rate and blood pressure increase. So again, you're going to have all this oxygen that you need that the blood is delivering. Your breathing becomes more rapid. Um, small airways in the lungs open wide so that you can get more oxygen during this time um, and with each breath. Um, and then also extra oxygen is sent to the brain um, to increase alertness. Um, sight, hearing, and other senses become sharper. Um, epinephrine triggers the release of blood sugar and fats from temporary storage sites in the body, which flood the bloodstream and give energy. So again, it's just preparing you to win this fight, get away and survive. Um, <clears throat> it supplies energy to all parts of the body. And at this time, things like digestion, and elimination um, are kind of shut down. So it doesn't matter what's in your stomach. We're gonna mess with that later. Um, if you have to go to the bathroom, do that later. Um, next, we have the parasympathetic nervous system. Easy for me to say, right? 
it conserves energy during relaxed states. And so think of it as the brake pedal of the brain. So we have the parasympathetic, which is gas, and then the sympathetic, I mean, the, I'm sorry, that's backwards, y'all. Sympathetic is the gas pedal, parasympathetic is the brake. It just conserves energy, like I said, during relaxed states. Um, as the initial surge of the epinephrine in your um, flight or flight or freeze response starts, um, as that goes away, the parasympathetic system checks in and goes, are we still in danger? Okay, if so, keep going. But otherwise, we're going to start bringing it down. Um, if the threat has passed, it will calm things down. If it hasn't, it will continue. And um, But again, if it doesn't, sorry, I'm not, I'm not going in order. But the parasympathetic then starts calming us down. Um, in general, it lowers the metabolic rate. And it's important for sleep. Uh, digesting food, and restoring blood pressure and heart rate. So it's going to get you calm. It's going to get that stuff in your stomach back, digesting, where we can calm down. Um, dysregulation of the parasympathetic system occurs in anxiety disorders, uh, post-traumatic stress disorders, and some other psychiatric disorders. And so that's where we see where if things are kind of off kilter and then we're not able to calm down and we stay in a heightened sense, um, that could be difficult. Your book, um, oh no, not your book. I found a very good um, uh, little, um, I don't know if you can see it here. My notes. So it's a little thing that I will post. It shows you how the sympathetic uh, system acts on the body and the parasympathetic one does. So I thought I found it very helpful and I will give that to y'all. Um, okay, now we're going to move on to the central nervous system. Um, there is a video for this about the neuron. Um, the neuron is a specialized brain cell that transmits electrical signals um, to other nerve cells and muscles or gland cells. Um, the, it's the basic working unit of the brain, right? So um, the human brain is comprised of several billion of these, um, and they're, it's, a, it's a range of what people think, um, how many that an adult brain has. Maybe it could be like 80 billion, could be more, could be a little bit less. Um, the neuron, and again, the video of this will show you, um, so I just hope that maybe for you auditory learners, um, hearing my smooth voice will help you <laughs> learn this stuff. Um, the properties of the neuron is you have the cell body, which is also called the soma, um, and that's where the neurons assemble proteins, maintain their metabolism. Um, then the nucleus is the middle of the cell body, the middle of the soma, and it contains DNA. Um, next is the cytoplasm, which is a clear internal fluid. Um, it helps give the shell cell shape. Um, it holds organelles, which are organized or specialized in structures, specialized structures, not instructions, um, within a living cell, um, such as mitochondria, 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 I don't know why I can't say that, and um, license, lysosomes, it holds those things in place, those organelles. Mitochondria are the site of energy production that reside within the cell body. So that's what gives it its spark to get to go. Um, that energy is in the form of adenosine triphosphate or ATP, which is what we will call it, which is thought to be the fundamental source of energy for neurons and all other cells. Um, the lysosome breaks down bacteria and viruses and um, into a protein that then can be reused by the cell and build new structures and organelles. Um, it's a nice cellular recycling system that contains digestive enzymes. Um, next is the axon, which is a long slender. So at first you have this kind of thing that looks, I don't know, a little bit like this, right? And then this kind of tail thing that goes out. Um, and it is a long slender projection of the neuron that typically conducts electrical impulses or action potentials. Um, away from the nerve cell body. So at first it's going to come in through the dendrites in the body and then it actually, oh, can you do it like your arm? It's like a little a, a line and then it's going to go back into the uh, synaptic cleft. But we'll get there. Um, an axon can range from a very small fraction of an inch up to three feet or more. Um, at the end of the axon, <clears throat> the voltage changes trigger a release of neurotransmitters, which are the um, brain's messenger cells, right, at the synapse. So like I said, you're going to come in the dendrite, go through the soma, go through the axon, and then out through the, the body, float around until you get to the next neuron. Um, the uh, communication of two neurons occurs um, 
at the end of the axon, which is called the axon terminal. Um, many axons are covered with specialized cells called oligodendrocytes, um, which oil that which coil around the axons and form a myelin sheath, which is very important, which is layered insulation that assists with speed and transmission of electrical signals along the axon. It's a fatty white substance um, that is the white matter of the brain. So if you think about it, if you know anything about wiring, I don't know a ton, but basically if you have a hot wire, you still are going to have that insulation around the wire and it's going to help the um, message go through. And what myelin does and what you'll see is it's kind of like, I don't know, if you think about sausages, you do in a, in a, in a string or not in a string, but you know, sausages that they first make, it looks like that. And what it does is in those little sausages, instead of having to travel the whole path slowly of the axon, is it allows it to jump from node to node, which actually allows for um, faster communication um, along those those fatty cells, the myelin is very important. Um, I might be jumping ahead in my notes, but um, so with young children, they're born without my, a lot of myelin, and that's what they spend their time building, is as you learn, the myelin builds. And then as we age, the myelin tend to go, tends to go away where there's not going to be new connections and there's not going to be new learning. Um, that is a great part to time to stop. In the um, next video, we will start with firing of the neuron. See you in a second.